This video will cover SpanWise analyses. The data in SpanWise analysis is gotten from running a static silly analysis. So if you want to review characteristics during this video, run a static analysis with no sequence, or at least on one with few data points, and click on the hemisphere-shaped line next to polar view. From left to right is across the span of the plane's wings. The y-axis can vary on what its quantity is, depending on what you want to analyze. You just right-click, go to current graph, define graph settings, and change the y-axis. Parallel or similarly colored lines can represent configurations of the same plane, but flying at different angles of attack. Some quantities will vary a lot at different AOAs, some will vary a little, and some won't vary at all like Reynolds' number is constant at different angles. The three different lines here represent the wing, which is the longest one, the horizontal stabilizer, which is the shorter one, and the vertical stabilizer. You can tell it's that because of the diagonal length. Yeah. The third one is the vertical stabilizer, you can tell because its Reynolds number gets much smaller as it tapers across and it only has one side. How drag coefficient is affected by AOA. If we look at zero degrees, we can see that the drag gets slightly higher and then slowly decreases off to the side. Um, keep in mind that this is a set of wings with no tapering. On the horizontal stabilizer, we can see a similar pattern where it starts off highest and then gets gradually smaller. At one degree, we can see that the drag coefficient for the horizontal stabilizer and the wing has gotten higher. And at two degrees, it is even higher than that. This shows how the drag coefficient increases at higher angles at all elements along the span of the plane. Now, if we check the negative angles, we can also see that they have positive drag coefficients, but are slightly smaller than they are at positive angles, which is due to how the NACA airfoils are shaped. If we were to run this analysis at a much higher negative angle though, like negative 10 degrees, we would see that the drag coefficient is very high for all surfaces. How lift coefficient is affected by AOA? If we check zero degrees, we can see the initial amount of lift is positive for the wings and negative for the horizontal stabilizer. At one degree, they both become more positive, and at two degrees, even more so. I should note the tail offset tilt angle is negative two degrees. At negative angles, like negative one and negative two, the coefficient of lift for both the wing and horizontal stabilizer are getting lower. And by negative two degrees, the coefficient of lift is negative for the wings. And at negative 10, it is much lower down to around negative 0.7 for the wings. This shows how at negative angles, all surfaces will produce negative lift. If we look at a design where only flaps are down and the rest of the wing is flat and normal and go to spanwise analysis, we can see that the lift coefficient is much higher corresponding to the areas where the flaps are and then gradually drops off as we approach the flat sections. However, it does not immediately spike downwards. And on this one, changes in angle are much more minor compared to the overall value of the flaps.
We can also see that changes in angle make a relatively small difference in lift coefficient for flat designs. And a similar pattern for a design where all flaps are down, we can see that the coefficient of lift remains high, but gradually slightly tapers off. It is also much smaller at the root section where there are no flaps. How Reynolds number changes for different aircraft configurations. Here we have multiple different angles for each of these lines showing, and yet this is because the Reynolds number is not affected by the angle attack. The red design is for a plane with no tapering, no changes in cord. It remains the constant size, and so the Reynolds number remains the same at around 6.3 times 10 to the 5th. For the purple design, we have a triangular taper where the size gradually decreases and remains a positive value at the end. So we can see a line forming and then go straight downwards at a smaller value. For the green design, we have an elliptical taper where the tapering gets more and more extreme as we approach and curves downwards to create this elliptical shape. So the Reynolds number line forms an elliptical arc as well. The yellow line represents a delta shaped wing where the tip cord is approximately zero. So the yellow line approaches zero for Reynolds number due to its geometric quantity. Induced angle. Induced angle represents a loss in lift that can be converted to a decrease in angle. We have pictured here the elliptical taper and regular design at one degree at 41 per second. We can see that at around its most extreme, the induced angle can be around two degrees for this aspect ratio. You can see how the induced angle increases around quadratically on the regular design as it approaches the tips of the wings. This means that lift is being lost at a rate proportional to span squared. This is why it is most efficient to have an elliptical wing because its decrease in the size of the wings is also quadratic. You can see here how the induced angle is generally less and much less at the tips. The benefit from elliptical wings, however, is slight compared to overall drag and is difficult to manufacture, which is why we will more rarely do it in DBF. Bending moment is the lift generated at this section times its distance from the center and represents how much the wings want to bend up or down and is important for considering how wings will turn. Here we can see how the regular style wings have a very high bending moment and the elliptical design are slightly smaller. If we go to the delta design, we can see that they also approach zero at the tips. The bending moment increases at higher angles due to the greater amount of lift generated, and at negative angles will have a negative bending moment. Center of pressure, X position, percentage. This will tell you where the lift averages out on the wing's cord as a percentage of its cord. 0% is the leading edge, and 100% is around the trailing edge. Here we have negative 1 degree pictured on the regular wings, and as we move to more positive angles, we can see that the center of pressure moves towards the leading edge. That is all for today on span-wise analysis. 
Thank you for listening and have a great day.